I'm going to throw this sports talk radio thing at you before I let you go, yeah. Daniel Jeremiah. The NFC playoff teams from last year, okay? So you take yep. the Bucks, and the Lions, and the Eagles and Cowboys, and you take the Rams and the 49ers and the Packers. Take them all. Okay. Which team from last year's playoffs do you think is more likely to go further this year than they did last year? Daniel Jeremiah. Again, I'll, I'll just repeat yeah. it for you. Eagles, Cowboys, yeah. one and done, right? Yeah. Um, and so were the Rams. Mm-hmm. And then you had the Packers eliminated in the divisional yeah. round. Yeah. Right, and oh, then oh, were they? In, they were in the no yeah, the divisional round. Correct. The Packers yep. were eliminated yep. in the divisional round by the 49ers, Niners, Niners. Lions, and the mm-hmm. Bucks got eliminated in the divisional round, and then the Lions got yeah. eliminated where they get eliminated, and this and so the Niners in front of the whole country when the Chiefs won it all. Mm-hmm. Which NFC playoff team do you think will last longer this year than they did last year? More likely to do? Gosh, that? I don't think any of those teams win uh, more than one game more than they did last year. So I have my pick of teams I think are going to advance around further. Um, which so then I, so then which ones are those in the AFC? I'm going to I'm say, look, this is way too early to be making a Super Bowl prediction, Rich. <laughs> but going, this is going to get yeah, this is getting clipped off. Well, uh, <laughs> no, it's this not. Is, yeah, 100% it's not. It, off. it is not. I'm, and I'm not asking you to make a Super Bowl prediction. No, but I, guess but this I is, have to because I'm telling you that the Lions are going to go further than they did last year. Okay, so that puts the Lions in the Super Bowl. Um, right, but I just looked at I, I. We did a roster exercise on the on the Move Six podcast, which, by the way, still trying to figure out. I love your opinion on it. Can we still hold on to the name, even though the sticks might not be there? No, anymore. sir. You uh, got. I'm sure the email from the NFL media group and the NFL that they and Sony are making a deal to start using uh, technology to spot the ball, even in this preseason. DJ, those those sticks are history at some point. Well, they'll, they'll always be there as a backup. How does that sound? You know. Okay. So, but I didn't mean to interrupt. Right. Go ahead. Please. No, I don't know. It's, it's very troubling. Uh, you can listen to DJ and Bucky Brooks on the Sony podcast uh, coming out <laughs> Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays during the fall. Um, <laughs> but I, I just, we did a roster exercise and we just kind of looked at like these, you know, championship foundations for these teams. So we did a quarterback, we did three offensive playmakers, could be running backs, tight ends, receivers, whatever, the top three guys. And we did your your top three off or, or your two. I think it was two two or three premier offensive linemen. Like, what do you have there? Then on the defensive side of the ball, two pass rushers could be inside, outside, or a combination, and then three playmakers in the back end. And when we did this exercise, Rich, you had the, the interesting comparison was the Niners and the Lions. And we talked about it before that champ game last year where you had the 49ers with all those guys in their prime, some of them getting towards the back of their prime, and then you had the Lions with all those guys just entering into their prime, 23-year-olds, you know, you have mm-hmm. Sewell and, and that whole group of guys that they have, Jameer Gibbs, Amon Ra, like all those guys are young ascending players. And I'm, I'm looking at that going, you know what? This might – they might just kind of blow the doors off the NFC. If, they, if all those guys who are all really, really good players take the next step – I think that's a Super Bowl caliber roster and a Super Bowl caliber team. All right. All right. Next time I have you on, I'll do that with the AFC for you. I'll give you more time on that. Okay. On that. Uh, okay. In the, in the hey, mean- next time next time you're on, if you want to carve out about, I don't know, five seconds, we can talk about the Dodgers offense, too, against my Padres. Well, hey, listen, congrats. First, out, yeah. first series win against the Dodgers since 2010. How yeah, about that? A minute. I saw a that. Minute. I saw my that. wife was not happy with me because we got home after the the comeback game where they were down five nothing, and I yeah. took my boys and uh, I got home and she's like, "How was the game?" And I'm like, "The game was the game was good." She's like, "Did you just throw your voice out? You have to do four hours of training camp coverage tomorrow." But, I'll be fine. Yeah, I'll be fine. Listen, you only know one speed, Daniel, and That's and, it. and 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 that was evidenced uh, on this very day, very special day, uh, thirty days until Appalachian State football gets played um this got tweeted out um in oh, celebration of that of that milestone day i guess 30 days until lab state football there you are in 1998 with what what the walk off plunge overtime win over yeah. wake forest right yeah yeah this Look was uh this was like you know the drew Brees like you. jump over the pile oh yeah uh drew a little more graceful than me there i'm not gonna lie but uh the uh that was a, that was a walk off winner and to this day Every time I wear something from App State, I get the question, as you would know and appreciate, were you on the team that beat Michigan? No, but we beat Wake Forest. <laughs> Let me tell you about that story. <laughs> I loved your response to that tweet today. Uh, hashtag ball security. And I, I threw it out there. I called it one point of pressure. You got one point of pressure. 
there, DJ. By the way, I golfed yes. the other day, Rich, and yes, my sir. left thumb was killing me. And apparently now I've realized that I have a growth in uh, in my left thumb there. So that's why it hurts so bad when hey, I man. golf. I don't know. Just you fought through it. You fought through it to spike it on Wake Forest, and we still relive that moment today. Daniel. There you go. Lasting hey, memories. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.